Was Space Marine 2 overhyped? If you look at their marketing, especially in the past six months, there was almost a new trailer every single day about something. I don't know if they're really even banking on it being a long-term multiplayer hit. Did it meet your expectations? Um... Oh, what? Hello, everyone, and welcome to Paint Perspective, episode 68. Was Space Marine 2 overhyped? This and more on this episode of Paint Perspective. Every week is more like a new leader. Like Anchor Man. <laughs> <laughs> I want to have like a fake Bomb. cityscape behind me, yeah. or like a stack of papers. Stack of papers. Maybe and we yeah. should just gradually add something each time, and by like episode 100, you'll be full, like in a suit. Yeah, yeah. CGI desk. Uh, that's good. I like that. Every week, it just slowly gets progressively yeah. more towards that. Yeah, go to a funny. charity shop and get you a cheap brown suit. Like yeah, some sort of tweed thing, hideous. Yeah, yeah. I like that. You know, I like that. Okay, I'll, I'll properly lean into that. We, we should maybe go full. Like, we'll get you like like a wig and moustache and stuff and we can go full yeah like anchor yeah, man. yeah. full anchor man no we'll, 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 I'll start growing the tash out now and then buy episode 100 buy episode 100 <laughs> 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 um, couple of updates uh, bits Warhammer bits we've got some we've got well uh, hundreds I mean, of truth, we've probably <laughs> got several thousands of bits yes yeah uh, I'll let you lead with this, Paul, but basically for the listeners, uh, just a bit of announcement. If you need any parts for any Warhammer stuff that's ever been made, basically ever. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, we're selling them. We've launched a shop we do, for, yeah. for spare parts. So if you need some Warhammer bits for conversions or you've lost a part or you want some extra stuff to paint, uh, check out the links. Uh, Paul, you're heading that up. How's that going? Well, very slowly, actually. It's, it's kind of stemmed from the, the war boot thing where we normally take hundreds and hundreds of bits to war boot it just in it's sort of in boxes there's a bit of a punch up over all the parts it's not organized it's just chaos so we decided to get some sort of order into it and actually put some of these things on ebay where people can sit calmly in their own home <laughs> and rifle through my bits uh and and pick out what they want um we by the time we finish it uh, we're trying to get about 150 to 200 bits on a week, if we can, if I can. And there is, rumor has it, several thousand there to is. go. Yeah. yeah. What, how much, how many total listings are there at the moment? 250. I've only been doing it a week and a half. Yeah, so, no, you know, no, give no, me a no, chance. No, yeah, no, I'm just saying. Just so, everyone, there's at least 250 yeah. gun to cap right now. I think I've, that. but what I'm doing first is I'm categorizing, I'm sort of doing a stock take before they go on eBay. And I think for the Primaris alone, we've got around about a thousand separate bits. So, are you enjoying like categorizing them and going through? Uh, it's just so many bits. Is that fun? That's are you, are you like one of those bits. people who's like in your zone? And you're like, I get to organize. I got my little yeah, trays. Um, it is quite nice. Yeah, I have a little 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 system of you know categorizing, making the spreadsheet, putting it down on the spreadsheet, taking a nice little a, picture. And there was a time before George worked here, before Paul worked mm. it, uh, pre-COVID, um, or just going into COVID, maybe like the lockdowns and stuff like that. Um, when we were all starting to come back into the office, obviously the office staff at that point was only, I think, me, James, mm. Adam, and Lou. I think that was all there was. Um, and we maybe had just hired uh, our first media person. But then um, at that point, a, a friend of mine came in just as like a part-time role. And you knew James as well from back in the day. Um, and his main, the main reason we got him in just like a few hours a week was to start cutting the bits yeah. down because none of us were doing it. And obviously we just had <laughs> sprues and sprues for the staff. And um, I walked past the door of the room that he was in once and he was, he was like on like a stool with his feet up on a box and a, a container on his belly basically. <laughs> and then just like a uh, laptop on with like a podcast on or something. He was just watching the laptop and just clipping stuff into the <laughs> into the container on his belly. Yeah. And I was like, you enjoying that? And he was like, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's all right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, obviously, it's a bit more of a, a strict operation here yeah. now. So a Paul's got a, I've seen the system. Paul's got a, a well-oiled machine going. Yeah. Going yeah. The, I feel my yeah. job role within Siege is sort of, I mean, it's like a piece of butter toast. The, the butter's getting spread thinner and thinner <laughs> every week where I end up doing something else. Um, but yeah, it's quite it's quite good fun. Uh, uh, the best thing is, and it's quite kind of nerdy, I suppose. I'm getting to learn all these parts 
just by sight so I know what kit they're coming from, especially the primaries parts, obviously. Mm -hmm. I, haven't, I, haven't even, I don't even, like the sisters as well, there's going to be that, at least another thousand parts for the sisters and all the other factions that you can think of. But um, yeah, we get the primaries done first. We'll get a couple of hundred on a week each week. I think we've got back, like I said, 250 on there at the moment. On the, it's just on eBay Siege Studio. If you just look for Siege Studios, it will just pop up. Link in the description, of yeah. course. Yeah. Um, and everything we've got so far is listed on there. As we get, as we, has there been any that you've seen and you've been like, oh, I didn't know that existed, or oh, yeah. I'm going to use that for mine? Yeah. Well, there's. Especially, I'm going to buy that actually. Well, not really, but I'll tell you what we have got. <laughs> There's been lots of vehicle parts, which are just just like random squares of plastic. And you think, what's that for? So part of it is also researching the parts. So, you know, you can sort of get online, go on to, I normally go on to the, obviously, GW website and try and trace Match the sprue the and sprue, try and yeah. see what the sprue, and then try and find where on the model it is. Because, because you, I mean, if you can look at a sprue, but it doesn't tell you what bit that is, does it? Yeah. yeah. So you think, well, I could go and then find the instruction manual, which we've probably got, because I've got hundreds of those as well. And figure out where it goes, but then you know, try and look at the model. It's it's a whole thing. It's, yeah. It just takes like it takes I had a, a while. I had a similar experience because uh, when I first started doing all the photography of all the commissions in the studio, mm. going through like models would show up that I'd never seen before. Like, yeah. I guess I've inadvertently learned easily all of the current forty k range, and then going into AOS, and then we also get like some of the retro stuff or like older models that have long yeah. long gone. So just like learning like. Have like a little mental catalog. Yeah. Mm. My, my favorite parts stuff. at the moment are the Reavers helmets. You know, they've got like the skull, skull plates. Yeah. Yeah. I hadn't seen those very often, to be honest. I thought, well, why don't more Space Marines have these? These are so cool. So, that was the co they are among the coolest. Yeah. Cool. Primary so cool. I even like the spin offs of those where it's like even the, um, is it the new like Terminator Chaplin that's got like a skull sort of helmet or something? Yeah, they've done like the, a couple of mm, models that aren't Reavers that had skull helmets. Yeah, really cool the Chaplin's normally do though, don't Chaplin they? on bike as well. Yes, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's got. One. But these, these are so, like cool. You know, they've got like kind of like filters for the gas mask on either side. They, yeah. yeah, they're pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. We've spoken yeah. about it before, mm. but like Primaris bits are much more interchangeable than people give them credit for. Mm. Like the fact yeah. that you can go on eBay and buy like a whole dozen Different. like random heads and stuff just yeah, to yeah, customize just your stuff. Them. So if you're someone who doesn't have like a big a uh, collection of, you know, surplus parts and whatnot, and you want to do some kit bashing or whatever. Yeah. Um, Cause you know, they're pretty affordable just to yeah. buy a few extra rent. Obviously buying that kit yeah. is quite expensive, but if you just want a few helmets and stuff uh, to customize yeah. your models, then it's an easy way to go. Mm. Come and see if yeah. we've got them. We probably have. Yeah. yeah. And if we haven't got them yet, they might be on their <laughs> really TBC. Yeah, yeah. Just so we've probably got them, but yeah. they've got to make their way on the Just check on the every shop. single day. There's probably going to be about another 50 or so more Bits added each day. Well, I'll, I'll try anyway. Try That's, can you imagine like the excitement in the Discord? Like, have you seen the new drop? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the bit drop. Seen the yeah. new drop. Seen 150 new drop. purity seals. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've been waiting for this oh, one. Oh, boy. Yeah. Wonder what they'll release to tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exciting. Uh, any hobby updates, Paul? What have you been up to? S well, uh, well, yeah. Some, I suppose. Uh, I, I've tidied up my whole hobby area. Um, oh, and I have to say, I've bought some nail varnish. Uh, oh yeah! yeah. Welcome. Um, I don't know yeah. Welcome. Call, uh, uh, the shelves. Of the yeah, shelves, yeah, yeah the shelves. Yeah. Yeah. We was uh, yeah. They, they Joe's, up, Joe's on board with this as well. Yeah, yeah. They, they yeah. turned up last night in my house. I thought, oh, I got those. I, I bought some. I got some new units there. Everything's tidy away, so it doesn't look like a, a bomb's gone off in a nice in a miniature factory. Are you going shelves like on the wall in front of your desk, or where is the placement? Well, I've got my going? desk here, and I've put these quite large units next to my desk. So they'll just go on, sit on the side of the mm. unit. So Good hopefully shout. they'll just be yeah. there. Good shout. Yeah. yeah. I just I like want to try, because I my desk is quite small and I end up painting the miniature and then there's, you know, everything is surrounded. It's like it's a horseshoe of stuff. Yeah. So yeah. I want to try and clear some of that so I've got a bit of room to breathe. But yeah, so that was quite a big thing over the week that I was off. Did some of that. Um, and also, oh, the combat patrol. I got the combat patrol. You bought a whole combat patrol? Not the whole combat, just one magazine. You know? <laughs> oh, the magazine. I the get magazine. confused. That I don't. Yeah. I actually don't like that they've called it combat no, patrol. No, it's a bit, it's it's very a bit confusing. confusing. Yeah. It should be combat yeah. patrols. Yeah. yeah. It's several I noticed ones. that there was, um, I noticed that there's a few, of, I've been in some shops, I noticed that there's, I guess they're coming out weekly, but I didn't really notice that a couple of weeks had gone by because yeah. I went in the shop and I was like, oh, it's like five. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's uh, a few. Yeah. yeah. So I, I've started painting the captain in Terminator armor. 
Nice. nice. What chapter are you going for? Uh, Blood Angels. Oh. oh. Um, just be, I, look, it's not because of anything. Look right? at him. He's so uh, happy for you, I'm Paul. Just look so at him. I'm so done with it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's, it's only because if you, if uh, keen listeners will remember a few episodes ago, when I finished painting my ass rack, and I, I'm sure I mentioned there that I quite enjoyed painting the red armor. Stick and it's with, not because stick with chaos. The, the red chaos people it's true. are way cooler. You would like chaos, wouldn't you? Blood. Dark angels. Yeah. I would. They're way cooler than blood angels. Know, yeah. but, so I thought I quite enjoyed that. Process. No, I'm so, sure it looks lovely. Yeah. So I just thought, well, perhaps I'll paint something, a space marine red when I get the opportunity. Be, be honest. You, you've seen the, the new blood angels releases. You got the I bug. Have, well, I. I am quite keen to get the Blood Angel captain, that new captain, just because he's quite a cool model. Yeah. Not because it I'm, is a cool model. It is a cool model. I, I mean, I have got some Dark Angel Terminators and stuff at home well, as well. So well, I just, there we go. <laughs> I just get my fancy. Do you know what I'm getting yeah. deja vu? You, know. you remember when I was trying to decide if I wanted to do Dark Angels or Blood yeah. Angels? Yeah. It's happening again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm on the other side of the fence now, <laughs> yeah. though. But it's quite nice to paint something that Terminator captain. I know he's so small compared to Vizic, mm. so it's quite nice to. I bet you're gonna, paint yeah, small. you're gonna find. A lot of other things way easier now. Yeah, I, I do this occasionally that. when yeah. uh, occasionally I'll go and have to paint some like Imperial Guard models, and I'm like, oh my god, they're tiny because I'm so used to painting Space Marines. Then you go back up to Space Marines, like, oh my god, the models are massive. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. But going up to you're doing a well, the Vizic scale you've done, is, he's huge. I don't think any of us realised how big that model is. No, I mean big. even even when we saw the box, yeah, it didn't oh. give it away though, did it? Because like even like an Avatar of Kane comes this in the same size say, box. It, yeah, yeah, and so it's. It's weird, yeah, because it seemed like it was like a sort of Magnus or Maltarian size model. Yeah. That was in a box that's, it was, it's usually like a bit thinner than what we might yeah. expect. Um, so, yeah, we, none of us expected it to be quite as big as it was, really. Did but, you have yeah. a moment when, I know we spoke about you painting that model last week. Is but that it up there? It is, yeah. 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 Did, you have a, did you have a moment when putting that together where you just went like, oh, no. Because <laughs> well, you yeah, didn't realise. Did. I can tell you, yeah, he did actually. Because I have a message. <laughs> what have um, you seen? What I can I... answer that for you. Um, I have a DM from Paul. Mm. Well, while you I get that up the... for scale, like I mean, I'm holding it. It's I, as big I, as your face. Your it's tiny as big as my head. Human face. You know? Do you know what's different about it compared to those other models that we mentioned as well? Is that it's like it's quite stocky. It's like wide as well. It's not like this, like. An avatar, for example, is like thin and tall. Yeah. Does that make sense? Whereas yeah. that's that's got detail coming I'll tell every, you what, every angle sort I'll of I'll tell thing. you what, I found I found a Spartan for scale. So there, <laughs> there you go. He's yeah. one evenly yeah. matched. He's one everyone, Spartan tall. Everyone's <laughs> very familiar with with a, with <laughs> the, 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 size the, uh, the size of a Spartan. We've all got a Spartan, I suppose. Well, that's, a, that's, that's, that's a big perfect true. one. That's yeah. a perfect one to use. Just get your um, foot on the I'm working universal. with what I've got within my arm's reach. Right? Also, for the <laughs> listeners, the people that weren't watching, when he says one Spartan tall, he that kind means of nothing. means one Spartan long, long because he tilted it. All right. Vertically. It wasn't the best. I, I'm working with terrible. what I've got in arm's reach, right? It's limited. Um, what am I going to do? Say it's one iron comparison. skull tall. Like, how's that going to work? <laughs> yeah, well, it's so one, white, it's dwarf one white, white dwarf, dwarf scale. Tall. Do you want a white yeah, dwarf that scale? Seems a bit more. Uh, well, no, because they changed the size of those. As they did. We had an argument yeah. about this earlier. Yeah. 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 Um, so j anyway, I had a message. Oh, so yeah, Paul, Paul took that uh, model home um, to paint, and then at 9:25 p.m. that evening. <laughs> It's I, like, yeah, I had a me. message saying, well, this is bigger than I first thought it was. <laughs> and there's a picture of it next to a space marine. And I was like, and his head isn't even on yet. And I was like, oh, yeah, that is quite big, to be honest. Yeah, I'll um, put that image on yeah. screen. <laughs> space is, marine, probably a bit better for scale than panic, a Spartan for most mode. people. I think well, you don't people. think that the length of a Spartan is a better, better comparison? And do you know what? <laughs> the space marine is on top of physics base there as well. Know, so right. he's even getting a bit of a benefit. He's but, getting a little boost up. Still, yeah. So, so I can answer that for you. Yes, Paul did take it over and go, <laughs> yeah. oh no. I, I did panic a little bit. Um, but yeah, with that, the uh, the Blood Angels captain, I thought well, I'm not as worried about doing capes and things now because what's that little tiny bit of cloth compared yeah, to that thing? Exactly. So I'll do that. And I thought I might have a go at doing some checkered patterns on the because he's got a couple of tilt shields. So mm. I might do try and do a little bit of freehand, seeing as he's so tiddly. I mean, it doesn't really matter. It's just for fun, isn't it? So yeah, I'm not going to cry about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I might um, do, but... <laughs> if it all goes wrong, wait, maybe. Wait, wait, I don't have to show anyone if it goes wrong, do I? I just uh, pretend that I haven't even No, but that's the yet. problem with being on the podcast oh, now. Yeah, that's true. Oh, Welcome I've to got... my world. If you say something, they'll pull you up on I it. Know, yeah, curses. <laughs> uh, I, well, I'll have to get another copy and just repaint it. 
Nice. Yeah. I suppose it only costs three, three, three pounds. Yeah, it's only yeah. three quid, isn't it? Are you, uh, did you find one in the end? No, I haven't seen. Do you a want sing- one? I've got a couple. I've got an extra one. Seen, Five quid. Sure. I haven't seen a single one of these magazines anywhere. Really? Yeah. And I, every- Do you know what I think happened, by the way? You spoke about when we done that episode talking about the magazine. That was, I think, on release day that we spoke about it. And mm. you said you went to the shops and you hadn't seen any. I think you went in too early because I'm imagining a scenario where the shops get sent all the stock. On the and day. Because it was on the day, like they hadn't put them Maybe out Maybe I should yet. have gone in in the afternoon. You should, or the day after even. Yeah. yeah. Um, every shop I've been in that sells magazines, I've checked, even with no, um, like no intention of buying it. I just mm-hmm. want to see it, just, just to, like make, just to check, one. just to make sure. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's there. Okay, that's fine. I've not every time I'm do, done the big shop, every, like no, <laughs> big shop, no, the big shop. I'm, I'm checking big Tesco, checking every uh, Sainsbury's man, just because it's local. But um, but yeah, yeah. No, nothing. Mm. You should try a big Tesco. Nothing. Uh, big Tesco is everything. In the high street. I've yeah, got, that's where I got mine it. from. I tried it. I'll tell you what you did wrong. Did they I only have you, one? Because no, you, you must have I'll got them you, for me. I'll tell you your error. I you went straight no, to six, the... Apparently. I went straight to the, the, the part of the shop where it's hundreds of magazines. Yeah. They're not there. They're by the counter next to the, the checkout bit. Oh, what? Yeah. So oh, is it because they're new? Are they on like a podium thing? Because they're new. Yeah. But no, uh, but, but I even... That's where they are. I even looked there where? in WH Smith and all they had was like match attacks. Stuff like that. Oh, what the heck? Like football are. stuff. And you got football some stickers. naturally, I'm guessing. You know, when in Rome. <laughs> yeah, so now, now I'm doing the Premier League sticker book for the year instead. <laughs> <laughs> um, Swap yeah, this. so I, I don't... There's none of the currently revealed ones that I have any intention of buying currently. I was toying with the idea of doing the limited... You're not going to get the sergeant limited one? Guy. Mm. I kind of don't like the idea of spending £10 on a sergeant. Yeah. Annoying situation I'm in is I actually in my two Infernus Marine squads that I have, I actually ruined the sergeant on one of them. Um <laughs> so now I do I literally do need, do need one. an Infernus Marine sergeant. Well but I don't want to spend te- like a tenner on that mm. one sergeant. But I'm already uh single handedly <laughs> added to your uh your Dark Angel collection. I might hook you up. We'll see. Oh, uh... yeah. Yeah. There we go. We'll see. Um, we'll see how it goes. Lens. But like, I think you need a helping hand with your dark angels, not me, because I don't know if it's going to be finished otherwise. If I don't donate, <sighs> it's, it's just adding. It's just adding more models for me to paint. That's what it is. It's a we'll psychological just trick. Just paint it. Isn't that your thing? How did you ruin just it? get it painted? How paint it faster. Ruin? Paint it faster. That's it. Yeah. How did you ruin it? Um, basically, on the Infernus Marine Sergeant, there's a bit of the. It's got. Um, is this the easy to build? Like the ones in the Leviathan, Yeah. So he's got a. Mm strap over his shoulder yep one of the, the strap you. lines up to a buckle which is on the gun yeah and from a certain angle the buckle on the gun looks like a spruce spur and i cut it oh, off oh you clipped it off so instead of just fixing that tiny part you went ah, my whole model's done I, I, haven't, I just one. haven't got i haven't no. got away. it's just a gap there like what if I only to put there was there? a bit oh, if you could, right if paul can find me <laughs> if paul can find me a specific Buckle. You don't need the, oh, you just need the arm, I found you? two buckles of, of guns in my um, bits thing and yeah. n- none of them line up to fill the gap. Just so re- uh, Paul just can find me a whole part. Just Paul can find me a He'll find you the whole buckle. arm. He'll do it. You just need the There's whole, no just way. Need... There's no other options with that. No, whatever, whatever that part is that it was on that you clipped off. The gun. He'll find yeah. you the whole thing. You'll have that will part. There's no way though. There's no other way to build that model so we won't have that part. What are you talking about? Leviathan sets. Yeah. They grow on trees, Joe. Well, look, regardless of that, regardless of that, that's the issue I had. So then it looked weird because he's just got this like bit of material hanging with like Actually, a bit, that, bit of sprue on that, wasn't it? No, I can't just put a bit of sprue on it. <laughs> what? You mean the metal buckle here? Yeah. It's got like a little, um, it like lines up all nice. I can't just have a bit of sprue in there. Just, just I can't be doing that. Off. I thought you had Square like, I thought the whole philosophy well, no, of your army was just get it done. No, it's not. That's not the, that's not the whole philosophy Paint it faster. Um, the, uh, Build slower. That well, I'm, well, I'm using that one. <laughs> Can I start like a, an unhinged like parody account of your Instagram called Build It Slower? <laughs> um, well, that was like measure up with twice. Your, 
you and your six models, I suppose that would fit quite well. For yeah, you. yeah, that's true. Um, it's my alter ego. Yeah. Well, my plan was to just sack that one off and use it as the test model. I was hoping that when I got this out, I, I thought because they shared the I know same what you I thought you meant the other weapon. Yeah, I know what you yeah. thought because I told you you were wrong four times and you still weren't checked. But um, <laughs> I'm just telling you that that is how it goes. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to use that as a test model, but I don't think I can add that as a fully thing. It would annoy mm. me yeah, as a full part of the army. Can't do it. You might have to get the magazine. Nah. Oh. Nah. I could buy well. There's another magazine that comes with, with the five, the whole squad. So I might just buy the full thing, and then I've got five marines. But then you're gonna have four, and True. then you're still gonna have. You're just in this perpetuity of always being one model short of the whole squad. Because then you go, oh, I've got four models. That's not enough. Yeah, for but the squad. four, the four is extra. The four is bonus. The I don't five need that them. you get on that sprue won't be the one that you need. Probably. Yeah, there's a there's a there's you know, a sergeant. The there'll be a sergeant. Yeah, yeah. 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 there'll yeah. be a sergeant. Yeah. So that would annoy me. Right. I'd have to buy the one. Yeah, that would irritate me because if I bought even if even if it was free, if you just gave me the spur of a five mounter, but like, you haven't solved my problem, like I've, it's the the no, one. But you have because I can use the other four for different. It's an odd. It's not a full squad though. So you're one model short. All right. So when that. you you painted some gene stealers for us recently, yeah. Mm. How many messed that up? How yeah. many gene stealers? Right. How many brood brothers did you paint? In in that yeah. little batch, yeah, I done four. Was, uh, you thinking that Primus was so we did so we did paint four, just four, did you? I it, just... I, it, I struggled to sleep at night. Haunt <laughs> <laughs> you to this day. Yeah, I thought that Primus came on the same size base. No, the Primus is a separate character. Yeah, that's like me painting a captain and four of these and going, oh look at this squad. Yeah, that would have been fine with me because it was for you know display purposes or whatever. I was I was going to be fine with it, but it was on a different size base. Yeah, and I, yeah. yeah. Well, there you it's go. Too deep by that so point. that's where I'm at. Not a good run for George in that last few minutes. Wrong no. about everything. So <laughs> I sort of um, tend to be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, should we do the listeners' comments? Yes, sure. Morrigan's Creations says, I personally have the subscription for Combat Patrol. The way I justify it is I don't drink, I don't smoke, and I have very few friends, so there's way worse things I could spend my money on. Although it could be argued there's better things to spend it on too. Hmm. There's always better things to spend it on. That doesn't. That's not yeah. a reason to not spend it. I yeah. suppose. I don't mind that. We had quite a few comments. Obviously, we'd done the sort of overview of the Combat Patrol magazine. We spoke about our experiences with subscribing previously. We came away with the take that it's better to buy just the individual issues. But I think a lot of people just wanted cool stuff to collect and show up on the door. It seems. I don't think anyone should have to justify why they no. spend their money either. Like, oh well, I don't drink, so I do that. Like, yeah, just spend your money on what you want. It's yeah. fine. It's fine. Yeah. Drink, drink, and I can't yeah. say that. <laughs> I, what I would say is buy uh, Warhammer responsibly. That's what I'd say. Yeah. 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 Drink all you want, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mallet says, I sold all my 40k armies and moved over to AOS at the start of 4th edition, having an absolute blast. The game is better, the models are cooler, and the fan base is infinitely more chill than 40k. From the outside looking in, I can just see that this is true. I just the chill. I pulled yeah. this up because the I kind of brushed on it, but I do feel that the AOS community is like just, just vibes, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're just chill. A bit more chill. Yeah. yeah, But could you hand? But I mean, you have, oh, all your forty k stuff, just saying goodbye to just it. Gone. Yeah, I, I don't reckon... know about that, but I do get the. I do definitely synergize with the fact of like the forty k mm. people, the fandom, us included, it's very very intense about this stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, as evidenced by a. 15 minute argument about about buckles painting. and screws <laughs> yeah. painting buckles we'll and guns we'll and see stuff. how much makes it into the <laughs> yeah, final yeah, cut yeah. <laughs> um, but the uh, the thing about it like I reckon for someone to be comfortable to make that move and then be glad that they made that move mm. I have a hunch that even from the beginning of their 40k journey potentially maybe had one eye on AOS Ooh. I reckon I reckon yeah. always it was a bit like I wonder what's going on over there. I quite like the look at that, but I'm doing 40k because X, Y, and Z. Um, yeah, it doesn't take much to turn to chaos, does it? Because like, <laughs> could you ever imagine James there. like just sacking off all of his no 40k oh, stuff? Yes, never never go and play ever. OS because no. it's a nicer experience. No. Yeah. You've got to be really certain, haven't you? That that's what you want to do. It reminds me of the, you know, the sort of analogy people make of the the walled garden of like the iPhone apple ecosystem yeah and they're like meanwhile androids getting like cool like folding technology and all this yeah. crazy stuff and everyone's like in the little walled garden they can't see it yeah and like yeah. the aos people are over there like oh, what's this? yeah oh, yeah oh they've got a big giant demon rat have they? <laughs> oh my fancy a bit of that 
Um, yeah, I think I can see, I can see that. I can see why that's even in. We'll talk about it more next episode. But even in my like first game of forty k, we started chatting about how much like we liked the idea of doing <laughs> AOS as yeah. well. Like we were like looking at the models like, while the other we were but like what? looking at the models on the shelf while the other person was like doing their turn or whatever. Yeah, yeah. but is, is the game comparatively easier to grasp and get around? I just or? Don't ask us. I don't, I don't, I don't no know. idea. Like everyone. I feel like people say, oh, yeah, it's really easy. And Spear, it's, spearhead, uh, I've heard spearhead, a lot yeah. of good things about. Yeah, Apparently, yeah. they really nailed that. I think they learned, again, I don't play the games. So I'm just, talk, I'm just passing on information I've heard. But what I heard was they learned from having done Combat Patrol for a little while now yeah. and then tightened up the screws a little bit for what is effectively AOS's version of Combat Patrol with Spearhead. Yeah, I just feel like sometimes the people saying that stuff other people trying to get you into the game. Yeah, so, that's true. That's possible. Bit, yeah. But from a like, painting perspective, there's always, I mean, the miniatures are. They're I rad. think we spent yeah, yeah, last yeah. time, yeah. didn't we? Spoke? I don't get enough um, yeah. chance to paint AOS. It's frustrating. I like. Yeah. I really like playing AOS, painting AOS models. Uh, Opportunity is mm. scarce as a yeah. miniature painter. We don't get but, that much of it booked in, to be honest. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's like 90% 40K. So, yeah. yeah. It's part of the difficulty with commission painting is you're obviously at behest of what is popular is what you tend to do a lot of mm. and then because it's what you do a lot of it's what you advertise a lot of and the yeah. more people see it so you yeah, it's, it's only going to get worse as well the more they're like separating everything out yeah it's like yeah. getting rid of demons and stuff yeah like now at least like before even if maybe we were booking in a lot more 40k but maybe there was some like demons and stuff in there that it kind of would tick some boxes for some aos painters you're not going to get as much of that no, now take that away. yeah yeah, yeah. So you will enjoy painting power armor. And that's that's the only that's the only option. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I'm going to butcher this name. I'm so sorry. Uh, Tewake Oraki says, from wow. what I understand, AOS is deliberately designed uh, to be open and evolving, so that they continue to move the law forward and release new ranges in perpetuity. I think the entire point is that they won't ever be set in stone. Uh, so that's off the back of our conversation about mm. law wise yeah. uh, perhaps limiting the 40k model design there was quite a few replies to this I think yeah I saw and I I don't know if I don't know where that info's come from like I'm not saying it's wrong or, or right but I don't know where that's come from I don't know if they've ever openly spoke about that necessarily being the aim or anything that's the first time I'm hearing about it it would make sense that is how it seems yeah. to be maybe if that's not even something that they've said I would say that that is just what their actions suggest, are yeah. just going yeah. off their actions it doesn't I, I think that. What, one comment that someone brought up um, it might have been as a reply to that or, or somewhere else but they mentioned how it felt like a lot of AOS stuff um, they would have the models made based off of some like loose law and then yeah. the actual law would be written around the model, around the model yeah. Yeah. whereas it's the other way around for 40k a lot of the time so that can be a potential option as to why you might get more freedom with design on yeah. iOS. Didn't we say in the previous episode as well, it's iOS at the moment is still comparatively quite young and it's Yeah, yeah. Yeah, process, I think a, so. a lot of this comment it, it, yeah, it's just natural for something that's so new to mm. be in this position, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. I think as well, uh, the fact of you can excuse a lot in um you know you've got this like suspension of disbelief thing. It's like even though I know a Valkyrie isn't real. I'm going to sit here and justify in my head how like the thrusters work. And like, if something's not quite yeah. right, people go, that doesn't make sense. How would that fly or whatever? In AOS, you can just go, it's magic. Like, you just got this <laughs> old, yeah, old backup, like, anything they, that yeah. doesn't make, anything that's mental, you just go, it's just magic. Yeah, but you get it? that in 40K as well. Yeah, it's space it's magic, isn't it? We had a full on argument about a fireproof cape. Yeah, but the warp. We just say the warp. The warp. And that's it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's all, it's from the warp. <laughs> Uh, Aaron Cheek says, I think the bigger the desk or workspace, the more stuff I collect that I barely use. Mm. That is in well, regards to our limited hobby space conversation. Yeah. Yeah. My desk is pretty small and I'd be surprised how much junk I've got on there. I can I can see myself like if I had a bigger desk, maybe I would have, you know, maybe I would have got a <laughs> brush toilet by now or something whereas uh, currently <laughs> now yeah. I don't have the room for it so I haven't really thought yeah. about that's why I thought, I thought I could I did go through this process last week I, thought, I, I was looking at much bigger desks but I thought if I get a bigger desk it's just going to be the same as it is now but more of it yeah really cluttered so that's why I said forget the desk keep the same size desk I've got 
but just have better storage systems. Mm, so yeah. it, it clears stuff off the desk, but it's still there. It's more more effort to keep tidy, isn't it? If you've got a bigger yeah. desk with like more yeah. stuff. Like. Plus most of it's It can be easier to keep it? tidy in a way though. because Only if you're restricted in what you're putting on there. Yeah. I suppose so. But if the temptation is, is that, well. look, let's be real. Yeah. We know the temptation will be there. I've got a bit more room. It's not yeah. that. It's not that messy. I can just leave that there. Just leave I'll that, push there, that yeah. over there, whatever. I think there is a sweet spot, though. I feel like I'm in a bit of a conundrum at the minute where I do feel that I'm outgrowing my space, um, mainly in terms of like physical, like painting. I just, I just had in my mind the whole got something. <laughs> like you're sitting at the desk, and you're just getting like too big. Well, basically, I have a small desk, like a puff and I needed more storage, <laughs> so I added a drawer unit underneath the desk which ate into my leg space. Right. And then I added another drawer unit on the other side because I needed more space. So I've got like, I'm oh, very, yeah. very boxed do, in. I can't be doing that. No. no. I can't be doing drawer units under me. No. I need freedom. Freedom. I need to, you know. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a long-term listener of the podcast, you'll know how important it is to have the right tools to aid you in your painting. And if there's one piece of equipment that I could never live without, it's my Onyx lamp from Native Lighting. It doesn't matter what brush or paints you have if you can't see what you're doing in the first place. The Onyx is the perfect lamp for miniature painting because it's super bright, 2200 lumen LEDs cast soft and diffused light on your models without any harsh shadows. And its daylight balanced color temperature of 6500K gives you the confidence that the colors you are painting are accurate. As someone with a very small hobby desk, by far my favorite feature though is its articulating arm, which clamps to the side of your desk, maximizing your workspace. It's also super adjustable so you can sit comfortably in the perfect painting position without sacrifice. It also folds up into a compact shape, which is great if you like to travel to paint with your friends. To upgrade your setup and order yours now, head to siegestudios.co.uk forward slash shop or head to the link in this episode's description. Okay, main topic, of course. Uh, was Space Marine 2 overhyped? No. The game... <laughs> See you next week. Uh, no. The... So it's been out for... A a week or so now. Uh, I don't know about you. I got the bougie, whatever the hell, edition for more money. You were that ideal consumer. Yeah. Saying, yeah. No, do you know what I done? I went, I've got like this weekend coming up free. I was like, I'll get the, the deluxe one because it'll be the only time I have to play it because I had a, a busy week the following week. Uh, bought the deluxe version. To play it early. To play it early and then didn't. Wow. So, that's good. That's I've good, isn't it? Extra yeah. 40 quid well spent. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I played a little bit, but I haven't, I haven't played a ton. So yeah. uh, going into this, we was all massively hyped for this game. We were, yeah. Especially us upstairs in the office, like me, Paul, Adam in the other room. We're all avid mm. video gamers, computer gamers, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Uh, so we, we've been talking about this for, and it was delayed as well. We've been talking about this for easily a year, right? Yeah. Um, it was announced like yeah, a yeah, couple of years ago. One, we've been right? getting very excited for it. Um, the game's out. We've done True. a hilarious playthrough with James yeah. Uh, yeah. on the channel. If you haven't seen it, I'll link it. That's uh, my only experience with the game so far. That's not. I think that might be the the... Just leave, leave that package there, Joe. Yeah. Had a good yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, that was hilarious. But uh, yeah, I've played, to preface this, I've played six hours of the single player. Played none of the multiplayer. Mm. Uh, but Paul has yeah. been on a rampage. Well, I've been smashing through the through the nids <laughs> like no man's business, I'll tell you. Yeah. No, uh, we, we were hyped for it. I think it wasn't exactly overhyped. I think it's just good marketing. If you look at their marketing, especially in the past six months, it's steadily ramped up almost at the point of like two weeks before release. There was almost a new trailer every single day about something. They, they, so they nailed the marketing for this. I cannot get away yeah. from information. Do you know this. what though? I think half of that isn't actually even the, the marketing. I think this game has taken on a life beyond what they assumed it would. I yeah. think that there are, there are places that I'm seeing this game being spoken about that, I don't think they ever had any mm. intention of reaching. Like in mm. terms of the greater video game conversation, um, it's very clear that this game was made for Warhammer people. Yeah. Warhammer nerds. As, as so, we learned in our playthrough, because James was going through looking at like random tanks and stuff yeah, and finding so all these like, little, little got details. Like, yeah. I got the feeling that their main initial marketing was to Warhammer people. Obviously, they had one eye on bringing other people in and bringing potentially video game people yeah. into Warhammer, which is why in America, and specifically, they did the board game thing um, with the Titus model and stuff yep. like that. Yeah. Um, but I think it's half of it is the marketing and half of it is that just because it's such a good game, um, objectively from a lot of hmm. people have said this, 
um, that it's been so successful in like staying in the conversation. And now more and more people, you get it a lot with films sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't even matter if a film is critically well received. I think for the uh, like biggest example that I can think of, yeah. fairly recent memory was when that Joker film came out. Yep. Yeah. Critics reception kind of mixed, um, not like an overwhelming critical success. But in however, terms of pop culture, it was. However, yeah. it made over like a billion dollars or something. Everyone was seeing that film because after the first week, enough people were talking yeah, about totally. it that it snowballs. I think a similar thing is happening to Space Marine Two. Yeah. I think it's, it's this Space Marine Two is kind of a love letter back to the original one. Mm. Um, it's very it's very simplistic video game wise, especially this sort of sort of day and age of video games it's very simple it's you drop into a mission you go from point a to point b you complete the mission i think in terms of so the nuts and bolts of like the gaming mechanics mm. though it's more not it's not complex that's like it's not oversimplified but it's more i was expecting a bit more of just a hack and slash that was just like any casual person could just like drop into and you just you know yeah, it feels like there's more it does feel it more that. like tactical than i was expecting um, while like in the greater scheme of video games, it might not be like super granular. But I, I but feel like there's definitely like there's you know combos and stuff like it's not super plain and simple. I've probably just watched more like content about the game than I have the game. experienced yeah. the game um, <laughs> because I'm interested. To That's see... kind of why I brought up the question of like, is it overhyped though? Because like, I I see everyone talking about it mm. and yeah. not the game do you know what i mean well the stuff i'm watching is still obviously based around the game i've been watching a lot of like video game creators talking about it people that i've never heard mention warhammer before with these huge platforms and talking about it really positively and even to the point of like it's kind of what paul was saying like people seem to really be appreciating that it's just an old school game that you can mm. just enjoy and it's good and then that's and it's i think the biggest thing and part of the reason there's a lot of buzz around it is the co-op aspect of it yeah it's bringing like not only are you playing it it's like you and your mm. warhammer friends yeah. or you're a warhammer guy and this is like the opportunity to get your friends who aren't into warhammer yeah in yeah if that makes sense like uh, i've got a uh, my gaming friends no i'm like super into this stuff but they're absolutely not but they also love video games so i know full well okay co-op yeah. campaign yeah it's the gateway isn't it but, i think i i just yeah it's been interesting really as someone who's not really that fussed about playing it i still obviously wanted it to be yeah really good and i i will probably watch like a playthrough or something on youtube just so that i can yeah, yeah, yeah. witness it but I, yeah. I don't really have any intention of. i think they, they did a good job of the release date was another good thing about it hmm. being sort of the start of september what else was there available in september yeah not a lot else so he was able to dominate pretty much. And they were fortunate as well. The only other like AAA release that's coming out around the same time is the Star Wars Outlaws game, which mm. absolutely flopped, which I think yeah. probably well, there was a couple of helped other games. divert a lot there of attention. There was a couple of other games as well that have sort of, they, they were released, but have sort of been switched on. Yeah. For, you know, their own reasons. But also you had, you had Gamescom not so long ago, which all, where people got to actually play test the thing. Uh, which and then that spread around mm. YouTube and things as well. So that really that sort of gets the snowball going, doesn't it? That sort of thing. But um, but yeah, we really enjoyed it. We played, we played some, of, completed the campaign, got some of the operations done, a little bit of PvP. PvP is um really simple. Another sort of simple add-on as well. Just, there's no overly complicated mechanics. There's not loads of spawn points. It's just one little map. A spawn point for the good guys and the bad guys, and that's it. And you just smash each other to bits, and and then Do you know that's it. On that note, like some of my favorite when I was playing mm. games a lot, some of my favorite multiplayer experiences are games where the multiplayer was a complete afterthought. Like they never yeah. thought that the multiplayer was actually going to be a thing. They just felt like they had to put it in there. Yeah. So like, um, even going like way back, mm. like I feel like Gears of War. This gets a lot of com this space ring gets a lot yeah. of comparisons to Gears of War, and Gears of War Online I absolutely love. Yeah, and I feel like that was never actually the point of that game. Yeah, it was so simple, mm. but it was so addictive. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then even going later on, like the first um, Last of Us. I, I was going to say Last of Us. The yeah. first Last of Us, I spent 
so many hours on that multiplayer with a group of friends and we at first we didn't even realize it had multiplayer yeah we had it was no so, idea it, i don't think they made a big deal about it no it, it was, was great you almost didn't so, even know it had it until you mm. on the start it was so good like yeah. it was so good and then uh like red dead redemption the yeah. first one yeah that had some a really cool multiplayer so multiplayer was never the point for those games and it feels like the same with this really but Everyone seems to be enjoying it for yeah, that. Yeah. Kind of Interestingly, thing. though, I think the multiplayer will be the make or break lifeblood of if this game is still relevant in months to come. We see this with a lot of video games. Like they come out, they're the it thing. There's a lot of hype. Even with co-op games, I think at the start of the year we had yeah. um, uh, Hell Divers, which was mm. like everywhere mm. for a month, and then just whew, like no one talks about it anymore. Um, with well, this, because, because it's like the hot new thing. I know there's other reasons for yeah. that, but my point being. If the multiplayer is fun and people like it, mm. they will play it for a long period of time. You think like, I know it's obviously a multiplayer focused game, but if you think like Call of Duty, for example, like the multiplayer this, loop this what... is very, very repetitive yeah. but because people enjoy it and mm. they play it with their friends, it's still relevant in six months, but if that makes yeah. sense. That's a different thing, I feel like, because that's like, those games are intended to last multiple years because of their multiplayer. Mm. I feel like that's not the case with Space Marine 2. Well, no, like, I feel that... like the point of this is the story and you'll probably get some DLC for some extra missions and things like that that yeah. you want to complete maybe. I don't know if they're really even banking on it being a long-term multiplayer hit. I don't know if they necessarily well, care yeah, about uh, that. You've got, to, you've got to remember to separate it from live service games this is it's not a live service game so i mean they have got a, they have put a roadmap out for the next year of all the mm. content they're gonna and there is release. like a season pass and stuff as well isn't there yeah so. there is but yeah i mean that'll get, get you the bits and pieces but i mean they are adding pvp maps and things there's a sprinkling of things like that but there's a lot more there's a pvp mode a pve mode as well like that there's a horde mode coming and i think it's this month or it might be oh so one of my that might be this because this mm. one of my questions was gonna be was if there was a uh, like a COD Zombies type mode. Mm. Is that what Horde mode well, is? Well, I, I guess this is going to be... Th I th well, I'm assuming it's just going to be your three-man co-op team facing off until you die from being overwhelmed Yeah, that must by, be like Zombies, yeah. right? Similar aspects. Yeah. I, I was thinking the other day, like, if they haven't done that, that's silly. Yeah. It's interesting it's with... It's definitely... The, they've, they've, they've said it's in, it's in the roadmap. You can yeah. see it's in there, so it's coming, yeah. It's interesting with this game because you say it feels like the story was their focus, but having played the campaign, it doesn't seem like as much of a focus as I thought, if that makes sense. Like it's not, it's not like loads of cutscenes. It's not like really deep rooted story in terms of the gameplay. It's very much a, we drop you in this space and for the next 40 minutes, you kind of just go through this like progressive map. I don't necessarily mean this. <laughs> My point being though, I feel like they're doing way. a lot of, it's like a lot of different things, which is why it interests me and why I'm wondering if it's going to still be relevant for mm. a long time because it's like, if you was really, really excited for the story and that was all you was buying it for, you, I would actually say you might be a little bit disappointed because it's not very long. Yeah. Um, and then co-op isn't also their entire sole focus because there's also the PvP and then they're talking about mm. these other modes and stuff. So yeah. I, I, it feels like they've kind of spread themselves in a lot of different directions, maybe trying to work out what's popular and then maybe yeah. they'll lean into that. Because they've got mm. this roadmap and the season pass and all the cosmetics and stuff, kind of like a live service game. Yeah. But then they've also got the single player stuff and even the story is co-op, but that's separate to the operation. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. It's a this bit will be good for scattered. You, you complete the campaign, you do the operations, you have a you have a play around in PvP a bit, unlock some of the cosmetic stuff for Space Marines, and if you're if you're into painting them 40k, you can use that Space Marine editor to check out what different colored yeah. schemes look like on space marines which i've seen those people do and then as the, as they drop new bits and pieces throughout the year just hop back in it's the same like you said before all games they have like this little honeymoon period where it's the you know it's the it's the best thing since sliced bread and then after a couple of months say two or three months it goes pretty quiet that's only because people move on to something else you don't you know you're not yeah. married to it so you you sort of, you play it until you've had your sort of but in the it. 40k space there's not a lot else so like people who are really into the hobby yeah that's kind of their like constant thing to go to right mm. if it's got like a solid multiplayer yeah that's still supported in months yeah, to come yeah, yeah. i feel like those people will keep going to it because even if a yeah. new video game comes out it's not part of your focus like, as a hobby yeah, yeah but i mean you'll always have your uh, 
the dedicated player base, which will yeah, always yeah. play it. Like I said, with hell divers, there's still sort of 20, 30,000 people playing that every day. So um, this will be the sort of similar. I don't know what the numbers will be, but um, but yeah, it will definitely have its dedicated player base. I mean, you drop into it every now and again. And it's, it's something as well, I mean, the lads can just sort of on a Friday night, it's just sort of, we can sort of chat, just catching up with each other and we'll just do an operation for 40 minutes or whatever, you know, and we'll just blitz through that. Not necessarily because we're engaging with that video game, but it's more of it's a sort of a social thing and yeah, we can yeah. chat, catch up together and, you know, kill some yeah. tyrannids or whatever along the way. To get to the actual question at hand, yeah. as someone who was hyped for this Ooh. game for a long time, do you feel it was overhyped? Were you perhaps underwhelmed with certain aspects of the game? Me personally, I would say I was underwhelmed with the campaign and the story mode. Not because it's not good. It was very, very it's fun. Very I haven't actually finished it yet, in fairness. Mm. But after like realizing that every single mission was going to be a 45 minute long, Great. go on this planet, mm. tip, like go through like these little clusters of enemies to the objective and have a big fight at the end. Mm. It felt like the gameplay loop was quite repetitive and like it didn't feel like there was many like story moments within the level, if that makes sense. You just weren't looking hard enough. That's all I'll say. <laughs> There's plenty of little secrets looking at all, the, data looking slates, all the tanks? All sorts of stuff. I don't necessarily mean with that, but I mean in terms of like, I didn't feel like I was getting a lot of actual story. Well, you know like, the operations the run parallel to the main story. Right, okay. So as you're going through the main story, the stuff that's happening in the background is mm. what you do in the operations. Okay, that's interesting. So whilst you're, whilst Titus is talking to other people on comms, which you're listening to, because that's the story, right? Or other people that are around him, you're actually communicating with other teams of space marines and things, which you then, which is what your multiplayer characters are in the operations. And they then can, whilst you play the operations, you are then getting the story feedback from their point of view from that campaign mission, which you, and then they talk to Titus. It's, you need to play the whole thing. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, you need yeah. to get to play the whole thing to get the whole. But I mean, the story is great. But I, I think when I first, before the game actually released, and I, so I had heard that perhaps the game was first of all, I'd heard the game was about twelve hours, mm. and then from people that actually play video games, they said it's more like six to eight hours, which is a lot less. <laughs> which is a you know, it's a lot less. But I thought, well, that's a bit underwhelming. That's a little bit. That's a shame. <laughs> but um, I think. I was quite happy with the story as it was. I mean, it could have been, I would have liked it to have been longer, but that's just me being a bit greedy and thinking, well, I've paid, you know, X amount of money for this. I want more of it. Um, and perhaps I shouldn't have smashed through the content in one day, you know. <laughs> There's that side of things, isn't I get, I, look, I haven't bought it, obviously, and I wasn't really ever probably going to. I was mm. tempted. And I might still get it eventually. But from my point of view... One of the things that always put me off video games, especially uh, campaigns and stories and stuff, is how long they are. Mm. Like, like twelve hours, even. Like, I don't want. I, I, just, I want <laughs> too the much. story. Like, I just want to play through, yeah. be able to get through it. So, six hours or something like that. If the story's good and the gameplay's fun, then I'd much prefer that. Me and my mates now, we we kind of look at a game that we can. We normally look, only sort of get games that we know we can play together. And because we know we can play together, well, that's just, that's, it's more fun to do that anyway, isn't it? It always makes the game seem better anyway. So, um, but I think we got, I think we, we, I think we got our money's worth from it. I think so. Um, I, I know there's going to be more content. I think we're going to be happy with it. I mean, I'll still, even if with that, my mates, I'll still go on to operations and things. I, w I wish they'd add a couple of different things to, to the game, which I'm sure they are going to over time. But um, there's a couple of little niggles and things which you'll iron out. But I think I'll still hop on every now and again. I'll still, I'll good. still, still I think I, it was quite good. I was, we enjoyed it ourselves. So. Did it? Did it meet your expectations? Would you say? Um, it pretty much, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I've still got my copy of Space Marine at home in the in the cupboard there, and I think it's. Uh, I got it in, obviously 2011. I think it was. I still got the receipt in the box. You know, on October played that. So that. So that sort of seeing that there, that sort of takes us right back anyway to that sort of time period and playing that together. But um, but yeah, I think we got our money's worth, and I think we had a good yeah we had a good time. Just looking at the, I know these are different timings to what yeah, you were yeah, just yeah. saying. 
and these are obviously longer than probably the average gamer. We're looking on um, how long to beat, mm-hmm. which is like the leading yeah, yeah. way to check that stuff. Ah, okay. Um, Space Marine 2, main story, nine and a half hours, it's saying. Wow. They just need to get good. Main, <laughs> main plus extras. <laughs> Hmm. So main plus, I imagine, all the all operations. The other yeah. Um, they're saying 13 and a half hours. Yeah. And completionist, which is unlock everything, everything in the game. Um, yeah. I imagine that goes across all the multiplayers and everything. Hmm. They're saying 24 and a half hours. Yeah. I suppose well, so, it depends. I suppose if you're doing, I don't know if there's any achievements tied to Which just, only, just to tie back compared to the first Space Marine game. Yeah. They've got seven and a half hours for the main story. Oh, shorter. Nine and a half hours for the main plus extra mm-hmm. and 23 hours for the completionist. So I do think this... It's I on don't par, think, isn't I it? I don't yeah. think you did necessarily used to get more. I don't think that was ever really a thing. Like I remember early like Call of Duty campaigns. Yeah. Stuff They've always, always been really, short. They were always, they were really always short. short, yeah. Um, like, uh, you were buying them for the multiplayer. Though. That's what I was just yeah. going to say. You're not buying it for... Partly I think a lot of people are whizzed through the stories. I think a lot of people are buying this game for the single player. A yeah, lot of yeah, people. of course. But like when you're when you're talking about games that had a larger story, even if you're talking about something like The Last of Us or something, which does have a much larger campaign, obviously, um, it's just such a different thing. Mm. Like I think if you compared it to games that are more similar to space marine so if you looked at maybe gears of war story whatever um it's probably in line with if not better than in terms of time and stuff and, yeah, and yeah. Stuff yeah. Do. No, it depends fair. how much time you've got to invest into these things anyway doesn't it as yeah well. what you want out of it everyone's different aren't they so yeah yeah um but i haven't obviously as i say i haven't played it i i don't feel like it's been overhyped from what i I'm hearing a lot of people say I've heard overwhelmingly positive mm. things about this from every corner of who would be talking about it. Yeah. Like, I don't want to come across as negative, by the way. I've absolutely loved playing the, the game. Die I'm hard. just, I'm really, I'm really fascinated by it's just release from like yeah. outside looking in. I'm I don't just, even mean like as me, I'm just, I, I'm really interested because it's been massively hyped, especially within our community now outside of that as well and video gamers who are going to be picking it up are going to have a completely different view of it mm. they're not going into it like yeah, with all I, these connotations like wanting to love it because they haven't but if one, they're not hobbyists they're not as invested in the lore and stuff you, they're not going to want to they're going to be looking at it more from like a video, a video gamer's game perspective, perspective. Yeah. that's why I'm interested about it but that's what I'm saying is even they're loving it like, yeah. so those people yeah. who are only invested in it as far as is this a good game seem to be loving it. I the people that are invested yeah. in it in terms of I love Warhammer and this mm. is the first mainstream Warhammer media we've actually had um, because I would argue the original Space Marine game probably wasn't that mainstream. It only reached yeah, a yeah. cult fan base. Um, so we're excited for that because it's our first like actual true like real mainstream Warhammer output. Mm. Like, And we're excited to see how these other people take it. And people in our community are enjoying it. So it feels like like everyone is enjoying yeah. this thing, from what I can tell. I think from, like, obviously, enjoying video games and Warhammer, you can't not get excited about it. Really. Yeah. It's yeah. just, yeah it's, yeah, it's there. It's what you want. Um, I've, lo- I've absolutely loved what I've played so far. Mm-hmm. It's been really fun. I was just like, I don't know if surprised is even the right word, but it's just, it's not fully what I was expecting in the sense of I'm surprised at how like scattered it is in terms of their focus. Mm. I thought just from the implications of it, it'd be like way more story driven plus some PVP. And mm. it seems like they're kind of, mm. they've got the PVP, they've got the co-op, they've got the co-op campaign, which is different to the co-op. They've got the multiplayer PVP stuff. We've got potentially horde modes and other stuff coming with the roadmap and then the season pass. So presumably they're going to be doing other stuff as mm. well. So I'm just, I mean, in, I'm intrigued as to where it will go. Um, and how long the hype wave will last, I yeah. suppose. I think ultimately that depends on whether any big streamers carry on with it. Because yeah. if a big streamer carries on playing it, then it will become more popular for in terms of co-op and multiplayers and PvP and stuff like that. That will give it longer life. If they don't, it might not last as long in terms of public consciousness or whatever. 
We frequently hear from you with questions asking how you can paint like our team of world-class and award-winning artists. Teaching is something that all of the team here at Siege are very passionate about, and we want to share with you the methods and techniques that we use to paint every single day all of the incredible miniatures and armies that you have seen from us. With the Siege Studios Patreon, you'll gain access to a growing catalog of over 300 step-by-step -step tutorials covering a huge variety of color schemes, miniatures, painting styles, and techniques, from beginner-focused foundation tutorials to full character masterclasses. Each lesson comes in a beautifully designed and easy to follow PDF format with accompanying artist commentary with new tutorials added every single week. Your subscription also includes access to our private patron channels on Discord so that you can interact directly with our artists asking for questions or feedback. You'll also be supporting the podcast directly, helping us to bring you these episodes every single week. So if you wanna take your painting to the next level and make the most of your very valuable hobby time, head over to patreon.com forward slash siege studios i'll tell you what i want to know there's one question is why haven't we still got the board game titus and the miniature yet that's a good question in the uk yeah that that whole thing why i want is, it's, it, playing the video game and i think ah oh, i really even if i was <laughs> i'm into warhammer and i paint but when i played the video game you think i really fancy painting a ultramarine now yeah and you think oh. so uh, Hopefully, chose a blood angel for your captain. Well, uh, hopefully, like other people that are, don't necessarily are are not into Warhammer. I, I know a couple of people that have said, "Well, how do I get into Warhammer?" Yeah. So hopefully, it might sort of swerve a few new hobbyists sort of I our saw, way into I the saw hobby. a good uh, Kirioff video on this recently, where he was saying that like he's been loving the game, mm. and he was saying how if you're in the UK. Um, <laughs> And you are playing this game for the first time. Yeah. And you're like, oh, what is this actually? I really fancy like looking into this or whatever. And you went on Warhammer like store on the web website. You can't really actually see anything that you really know from the game. Like yeah. if you go into your like into their like uh starter kits and like getting started and mm. stuff like that. There's no Titus. There's no Titus for one, but then there's no like even in like obviously Leviathan and in combat patrols and stuff. There's no like just regular intercessors either because mm. they're, they're all Terminators or Stone Guard or, or whatever. Um, there's a lot of stuff even within some of the other armies that you encounter. Um, there's nothing really that correlates to what you see in the game. So like you don't the even closest really know thing really is a box of Primaris intercessors. So yeah, blue, but you won't armors. find that. Yeah. yeah, but you won't find that in the like getting started you'd have to know I'm to look to for it, it type mm. thing. Yeah. yeah you'd have to even know to look that that was available I think he said in the Space Marine one the closest thing you can come in the Space Marine Combat Patrol is uh, you you potentially get to use I think the Infernus gun or something in the game at some point yeah oh you can unlock you it do. you like do that. get to use it yeah so that's the closest thing that you would maybe recognise like um, and I do think that's a bit of a weird which is why I'm saying I don't think they thought it was going to be as big as it is. Because so I think they would have. It. I think they would have planned a lot more stuff. Mm. But I Push. think they let it let it operate over there on its own thing, and yeah. it's just going to do its thing, yeah. and that's it. Kind Imagine of. if there was literally like a start kit, and it was like not even Titus, but just like a mar an intercessor. Mm. They missed one, isn't they? Haven't they got a space? It's Infernus Marines now, though. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. It used. They used to have a little. Uh, starter kit yeah, and it was and three Marine. intercessors they yeah. just upped it to, and to paints and stuff Marines. now it's your first marine so it's a bit less relevant but uh, yeah. at least if there was like you know board game equivalent or whatever sure but, uh, yeah, yeah. not available in the UK just a bit of an odd odd decision but yeah. maybe they weren't prepared for it maybe they didn't think it was going to catch what I'm I just don't yeah. think I think they thought again I don't know no one knows yeah but I think they thought okay yeah we'll we'll let them do that game over there yeah. and we'll license that off or and we obviously they've got people overseeing it and blah 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 but whatever but like I think they just thought yeah let that operate in its own thing yeah um, perhaps it could be a good thing in a way because if you do just go onto the site we've all done it you're just scrolling around and looking around there maybe for somebody who's come from the video game oh what is this I want to get into it you look around on the Warhammer website I just think, yeah. and you just see like loads of stuff you might find something that's like completely irrelevant that's true to the game but, but also fancy also likely to be overwhelmed if you yeah. don't know what you're talking about. It's better to sort of true. guide new people and sort of funnel them into a certain You can yeah. go on the website. I can't remember if this is a specific thing that even Kirioff might have said in that video and I'm just like plagiarizing it. But if you can go on the <laughs> website and click on a, 
heading that said Space Marine 2 mm. or something and you clicked on it and you could buy you could buy maybe the game and then you could also <laughs> buy all the relevant miniatures to the game yeah. or something like that. Hilariously, actually, at the minute, when you go onto the Warhammer homepage at present, uh, it's all AOS stuff. It's the new Skaven releases. Yeah, so, you so wouldn't it, even... yeah. they're operating on their own schedule, like yeah. nothing to do with the game. Um, Which is funny because obviously they've been building the hype for at least sort of this year and definitely in the last six months surely they would have gauged the response from the communities the two separate communities the gaming and the, and the warhammer communities about how popular this thing was going to be and how it's yeah. going to blow up perhaps I, at the time. I, I do yeah i just think it's so beyond our like understanding of the inner workings of the company True. You know what i mean like yeah. we just don't know maybe it was too late by the time they realized it was, was going to be massive yeah, how it's too late spoken to about, but from the outside yeah. looking in it does feel weird doesn't it yeah. it does yeah. point towards I was they so didn't know how big it was ready going. for when Space Marine 2 was going to be released that Titus and the game, the board game was going to be released alongside it for mm. some reason I didn't my head that that was going to be I, I, just I sort of had that in my head as well I don't know yeah. why based on absolutely nothing it came yeah, out, of course yeah based on but, my own crazy it yeah, came yeah. out way before just only in America it did yeah yeah, yeah it was, was it Target yeah, it was like last year or something. Yeah. I think it's a Target like, exclusive board game in the USA. Yeah, I believe. yeah. it's the only way to get Titus currently. I believe. Mm -hmm. yeah. We'll obviously we will have him eventually. I'm sure it'll come. I I'm wonder. Sure. I do wonder if or kit bash your own with bits. <laughs> <laughs> from the bit I do shop. wonder if eventually, if they do make a bigger wave in terms of uh, DLC or something, or if there's a big thing, maybe now I'm sure they'll the tie things are... in a bit more, and maybe yeah. they'll announce the Titus model being available along with some DLC. Or I wonder whether maybe by Christmas there might be a little... Something like that. I hope it isn't just the board game and we get it over here now. I yeah. hope it is like um, something a bit more substantial than that. Yeah. But we'll see. Yeah. Did you see um, the one that Adam painted? I did. Yeah. Yes. It looks... Um, that model got a lot of heat when it was first shown off online. That mm. model looks so different in person yeah. than it does like in the photos, mm. um, which is interesting. You don't mean Adam's one got hit, by the way. You know, no, 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 no. The 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 actual <laughs> like the, OG the actual ones. box art, like when they announced the model, yeah, yeah, got loads of heat, and then you look at it in person, yeah, and but it's, the sculpt is. We've been through it. I can't see. Every, they all get heat. Everyone's always moaning. I'm saying like, the 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 po I'm just saying the pose and the model and the way the model stands. And yeah, yeah, I know. But then and then we we see it and then we're like, oh, it's actually good. They know what they're doing. Actually, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Funny that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a cool, cool model. Yeah, it's it cool. cool model. Yeah. That's why we want one. Hurry yeah. up. I want one so I can not use it as tight. I want to paint one like a blood angel. <laughs> <laughs> if you enjoy listening to these podcast episodes every single week, I'd like to ask that you could please do us one small, tiny favor in return and hit that subscribe button on YouTube or the follow button on your podcast app. It takes only two seconds and it really, really helps us out. And it allows us to bring you these episodes for free every single week. Thank you so much. Back to the episode. Question of the week time. Thank you everyone for submitting your questions for question of the week. If you have a question that you'd like us to answer on a future episode of the podcast, please do leave it in the comments down below on YouTube. Uh, this week we have a question from Matt Miller who says, if you find yourself in a hobby slump, how can you get out of it? <gasps> well, I've recently arisen from a hobby slump. Arisen? Arisen. Yeah. Like Nosferatu um, himself. Yeah. <laughs> um, how, how did you arise from Seb? Hobby slump. Um, for Tell me, us. for me, it was getting obviously a date. Uh, well, it's a mix. We've spoke before with if you're not feeling it and stuff like mm. that to just take a break. And I have had a break just through moving and stuff. So I've had an, a break forced upon me um, where I couldn't hobby for a while. So we've done that before. Um, so I think that helped because I was like raring to go. But then also on top of that, I obviously decided to start playing the game again. Um, and I now have like actual goals and plans in place in terms of like, oh, I'm playing a game in, in four weeks. So mm. I want to make sure I get this done and I'm enjoying playing the game. So that's, it's not really a, oh, I have to do this. It's a, I'll enjoy the game even more if I've done this kind of thing. And it's, it's sort of a self-fulfilling motivational thing. Um, so that's helped. So I would say if you're on the game inside, get some plans made to, to game, get yourself into a tournament, get mm. yourself with some friends or something like that. If you put some plans ahead and you have something to work towards, that might help. If you're not on the game inside, maybe look at some more like 
local painting competitions and things like that. It doesn't have to be Golden Demon. Um, most like GW stores might yeah, have a I do them every painting month, competition. I? I do them um, maybe even in a Facebook group or Discord or something that you're a part of, mm. get yourself get get one organized. You know what I mean? Like yeah. give give yourself these like kind of goals. And I think that's helped. That's definitely helped me kind of come out of that. So if I if I'm not to say my usual answer of just give yourself a break until you really yeah. want to do it again. Um, I'd point towards that. I think our our monthly challenges might be a good good yeah. thing. We do the monthly yep. challenges on um, on Discord, and we obviously talk about them on the podcast and stuff. And it just gives you something to focus on, and uh, yeah, it might might reignite it a little bit for you. Yeah, true. Um, maybe if you're bored of I don't know what why you're in a slump, why you're in a slump in the first place. That's that's quite important. Yeah, maybe addressing what that is. I guess yeah, it's quite important. Um, so if you're bored of painting space, you know, ultramarines every single day, perhaps just if, you, if you're in a slump because of that, just paint something completely different. Go to AOS or go to, the, you know, the Star Wars game system or anything. Just paint anything else other than what you feel bored of painting for a while. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad difference. you mentioned other systems there as well. Yeah. I think even just it's being just in the... Games work even just being in the, work. like... GW umbrella. It's yeah. like if you go, it's it's nice because if you go and paint an AOS model, hmm. it's very familiar. It's yeah. in the same sort of box, the same sort of sprue. The instructions are basically exactly the same, aren't they? The plastic is even familiar. It's the same stuff. Yeah. If you go to something like completely different and like everything's fresh, do you yeah. know what I mean? You're and you learn things you're like, oh, the models actually come packaged like this, and like, oh, what's working with this resin like compared to plastic, or oh, they use PVC instead. Do you know? Just working with different materials can yeah. just make it feel so much fresher than it is if that makes sense like even if you're building and cleaning say like a you know stormtrooper for shatterpoint or something even though it's like as close as you're going to get to a space marine without being a space marine mm. just being a different system and just mm. like slightly different proportions slightly different scale like it just yeah. feels fresh it feels really fresh it's what even though it's like the same thing yeah. thereabouts it's yeah. what you call in the trade a hobby holiday yeah, you're still, yeah. You're still doing, well I just made that up but anyway you just you still no, I like it I like it no, no double down <laughs> <laughs> you're still in the hobby but you always yeah, say that all the time yeah, in yeah. The train. you're always hearing us talking about hobby holidays just going yeah. I'm just uh, HH in it today um, but you're still in the, within your hobby but you're doing something different to what you normally do I'll tell you another thing might, thing might be worth trying uh, if you've got some friends or something that are in the hobby as well have like like the equivalent of like a play date <laughs> Take your painting gear around to each other's houses and sit around the dining table or whatever if you've got the room or you know however you do it, and just have like a like a little social session, just chatting to each other while you're doing it. Yeah, yeah. James, James has mentioned. I've this done a that lot. before. It's good fun. It's and, good. and do you know what? Actually, I mean, if I had friends, I'd do it. Bit of, bit of, <laughs> you know, <laughs> bit of a uh, you know, it's such a sad life. <laughs> well, you've got the lads on That's Space a, Marine too. Yeah, yeah but what, what, about, well? what about the lads? No, yeah. They, well, they don't do the other the side of the hobby. The lads just turn this off because they just couldn't yeah. believe what you just said. Yeah, they, well, they, they're not into... Well, they like the, the miniatures, I stuff. suppose, but they don't really do the, the more having a hobby. Bit, yeah. you know, so. um, I... What was I going to say? Oh, Who knows? Re recently yeah. on... Uh, I've seen a couple of people talk about this. This is a bit of a tangent, but kind of plays into what Paul was just saying of like uh, hobby holiday? hangout type oh. things. Not hobby holiday, unfortunately. Um <laughs> But the Warhammer official YouTube channel just put a video out fairly recently that was basically like, um, I, saw, I can't remember who I saw describe it like this, mm. um, but they, a few people described it as like a battle report for painting. And it's the oh. kill team. Um, they, it was like painting a kill team in five days or something. And they were kind of, it's the two hosts. And they, That's a really cool idea. I yeah, like the sound and they, of that. They're yeah. like basically sitting down opposite a table talking through how they painted their things and stuff like that. But like they're obviously, they, they could also be painting like that. Maybe there's some way to like set that sort of challenge. You, you don't need, they need a group. You could set that challenge with one person and maybe like, you know that, oh, at the end of the week, we're going to have a little chat about it and, and we're going to go through like what I've done sort of thing. I think that's quite cool. If they set a precedent of that being a thing. That's really cool. Mm. A, a, a pat rep. <laughs> <laughs> Um, a working title. <laughs> Hobby holidays from the Um So if the, if they set a bit, it's quite a novel idea though. I do like that. Yeah, yeah. it is. It was a cool video, um, and I saw yeah a couple of people talking about it like that. Um, if they set a bit of a precedent of that being a thing, 
that could be just a social thing as yeah. well, potentially. Like the way that, uh, and and again, like maybe you are like just chatting on a on a Discord while you're doing it with the other people yeah. that are participating. It's kind of, I guess, a bit of a way of doing like the whole um, tale of painters blog thing yeah. that, that people used to do, or they do in White Dwarf and stuff. But yeah, um, yeah, maybe something like that. Yeah, cool. maybe. You've got to figure out why you're in the slump first, I guess. Yeah. yeah. If you're in the slump because you hate miniature painting, then yeah. none of that's going to work. do something else. <laughs> you know, skateboarding or something. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Our weekly tradition on the podcast is a segment that we like to call Hobby Hacks. This is where we share little painting hobby related uh, tip with you. You can implement into your hobby. Uh, I've got one. Oh, you want to do your one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. That's yeah. Fine. Go on then. Push Joe, it. In. No, you're not getting away with that. <laughs> no, it's, if you want to do your one, that's fine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. I'll save mine. Because you've got loads, haven't you? Yeah, I'll save yeah. mine. I'll every, save every mine. week, Joe is like, let me do one, let me do one. And I always go, no, Joe. No, yeah. No, shh. Yeah. yeah. Chill. George yeah. thinks he's a better for whatever reason, but we'll, we'll save mine. That's fine. <laughs> um, I've got a trick for, uh, you know when you get like, usually it's a shoulder pad on a Marine or sometimes on vehicles as well. Uh, you know, like the big scrolls mm-hmm. that if you look at the box art, they do like names, like lettering on. Yeah. yeah. If you think in the Spirit of Space Marine 2, it's got a, you got Terra or Ultra or something on his oh, one, yeah. on one of them? One of them. Uh, sure. So you know those? Yep. I have struggled with them because if you're listening, you might have had a similar scenario where you start with the first letter and you're like, <laughs> got Nailed this. It. Second letter, eh, mm-hmm. it's all right, we got this. And then you slowly start running out of room mm-hmm. and you realize that you've written Ultra. <laughs> <laughs> you've run out of room for the U. Yep. Uh, and also the letters are getting progressively wider and misshapen. Mm. So uh, this is, I did not invent this, Joe. I know you're hot on this stuff. George normally likes to only do ones that we invented. I don't know if you've ever caught onto this, but George, well, if, you do, if you do a I hobby see. hack and you yeah, haven't yeah. invented it, George will call Claim you it. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I actually don't know who, where I heard it. I've heard multiple people say this. I can't actually remember where I originally heard it. But mm. what I do now is... I've got at my desk, it's okay. a part of my setup now. It's like locked in. I've got a decent like uh, felt pen, sharp, nice sharp point. I've just got just a little pad of A4 paper and I'll write out the name purely just to visualize like letter spacing because you'd be mm-hmm. astonished at how like incorrect your brain's interpretation of how wide an A is compared to an O. Makes sense. So, like, I, I, if you use lined paper and you draw in block capitals the name you want to use, going from like filling the line like perfectly, writing it as neat as you can, you've got like a perfect reference point, mm-hmm. and then you can start dividing that up. So, if it's like a five-letter word, you can go, okay, I'm going to do the first letter all the way to the edge, and then I'm going to do the final letter all the way to the edge. Mm. Then you can do the middle letter, and then you've got your space. So, well, you you need to, so everything's nice and symmetrical. And then if you want to take it a step further, you could try painting it on some lined paper first before you mm. go on the pad. So you can have like a few goes to get your like your lettering and your spacing done nicely. Just yeah. Practice your brush control, mm. doing those little letters, yeah. etc. And you can also practice like your font if you want to get into that. So rather than having like, because you don't want to paint like a billion shoulder pads and mess it up and go back over it. So if you just get some lined paper, draw or even plain paper and just with a ruler, just scribe out like to scale. Yeah. Mm. yeah two block lines and you just try and paint in between them and just focus on like, yeah, writing the name out. You'd be surprised how much easier it makes it for you because you can just visualize the letter spacing yeah, yeah. rather than trying to trying to do it in your head. That and you can go I'm, back to front as well. That's what mine was going to be actually. Yeah, I've so got that's... another little tip for you. <laughs> just, which I thought you were going to go with to start with, but you, you didn't. Um, when you're writing letters on a scroll, I'm not very good at this, by the way. I'm terrible at it. But what I tend to do is if I've got like a word, any word, whatever you're trying to write, Start in the middle. Mm. So I thought you were going to say start in the middle, but I do see. I see the value to what you were saying. Mm. Doing the have edge, a practice, doing yeah, the edge a... ones first as well, and then yeah. doing the middle. I think my my issue with starting in the middle, middle is then, I don't think yeah. that's like wrong either. But my issue with starting in the middle is you can still running to running out of space. Side. Well, then just do it properly. <laughs> yeah. I'm not I saying that yours I'm, is wrong, but you know, <laughs> I wish I had the i the first time I ever encountered this issue was. Um, I was going to see like a WWE show as a, oh, as a child WWE. and I was writing Jesus. a sign. Oh, okay. And like, it, the I, was going with that. I was writing a sign and it was like, it was all fine. And then 
I just curled that yeah. upside there. <laughs> yeah. Um, so little... I could have done with that then, really. Yeah. But you could have used jot on your scroll in a light pencil. Yeah. First. That's what I've done before in the past. Does that work? Yes. All right. <laughs> it's convincing. Confident. Very confident. <laughs> yes. You just I'll write, just be worried you know, about chipping. Chipping. It's like quite abrasive. Pencil. Soft pencil. pencil. Just, you, you don't need to press hard with a pencil. You just, you know, just a very faint so you can actually see something on there. Yeah. So, you know, you can I just feel like at that point, you might as well just use the paint, surely. No, because well, no, then you're going to make out. a mistake, aren't you? You can paint over it. Like, yeah, but true. then you're putting layers and layers of paint on it. Yeah. I, I yeah, don't know, true. George. Sometimes I, you claim to be a, uh, an expert painter, but I don't know. I don't know. Come, out, I come out with Several this times a day, he claims to be a pro painter. Have you heard? I'm saying it all the time. I'm always yeah. going around the office saying, hey, excuse me, pro painter coming yeah. through. There's literally yeah. a sign on your desk that says your name and then it says pro painter. Pro painter, pro painter, painter on there. Expert painter. Check the label in his shirt. It says pro painter only on it. Yeah, so. You know, people have like the PhD. One just says PP. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, we're going to jump over now into the post show of the podcast, which is for our patrons. So if you would like to get more paint perspective content in your life, ad free episodes, extended episodes, all that good stuff, check the link in the description of this episode. You can find a link to our patron, you can find all the details over there. In addition to that, you also gain access to hundreds of high quality PDF tutorials uh, updated every single week. Uh, really cool stuff. So check the link in the description. Otherwise, we thank you for watching and we will see you next week. So is GW just killing kill team then? What's happening with that? Oh God, yeah. Um, there's some notable ones that aren't there. It's not like, oh, out of stock, we're going to be repackaging this. It's yeah. just, like it's not there. It's like they're gaslighting you. They're like, what, Kazakin? <laughs> yeah. You know? <laughs>